Hey, it's Terry Gorry, and this is the Irish Law and Small Business Podcast. So, today I want to discuss the situation where you may be considering leaving your job. You may feel that you're not getting a fair shake in the workplace, you're not being treated fairly or there's some other issue that's going to cause you to leave your job and you may also be considering bringing a claim for constructive dismissal then listening to this uh, brief conversation or brief dialogue from me might be of use to you because you'd be well advised to read a recent decision from the WRC, the Workplace Relations Commission, in a case called Brian Griffin versus Sage. There is a blog post on my website, employmentrightsireland.com, which synopsizes the case itself, but it also contains a link to the decision from the WRC and spending 10 or 15 minutes reading that decision from the WRC would be well worth your while because the adjudicator, Mr. Dolan, goes into the whole area of constructive dismissal, what the proofs are required in order to win, and sets out and refers in his decision to a lot of decisions, a lot of decisions from the Labour Court and the Employment Appeals Tribunal and from the WRC, and indeed from the civil courts down through the years about constructive dismissal cases. The background to this particular case was that Mr Griffin resigned his position of two and a half years with Sage. He brought a claim for constructive dismissal. The background to the decision for Mr Griffin to resign was that Another person had left the job and in the exit interview they had apparently made a complaint of uh, or an allegation of bullying against Mr Griffin. Mr Griffin felt aggrieved about this and felt that he had suffered reputational damage. The difficulty for Sage however was that the accuser had left the company. And the company's position was that there wasn't a whole pile that they could do, given that the accuser, the complainant, the person who levelled the accusation against Mr Griffin, had left the company. Their hands were tied. Mr Griffin felt stressed as a consequence. He felt that his reputation had been tarnished and he believed he had no option but to resign his position immediately with the company to protect his reputation and health. He sought loss of earnings and... Uh, compensation and the payment of his legal fees. Firstly, the WRC does not award legal fees, so that was never a runner. Secondly, compensation is not really a runner either. What he's entitled to is compensation by way of a calculation of his loss of earnings. He's essentially entitled to his loss of earnings. The adjudicator in the decision dealt very comprehensively with the law surrounding constructive dismissal and that's why I refer you to my blog post which contains a link to the decision because it's pretty comprehensive and it will put you straight, it'll uh, make it pretty clear what you need to do. You referred to the Berber versus Dunn Stores decision. Now I think that was either a High Court or a Supreme Court decision. It says that the conduct of the employer complained of must be unreasonable and without proper cause and its effect on the employee must be judged objectively, reasonably and sensibly in order to determine if it is such that the employee cannot be expected to put up with it. Basically, in order to win a claim for constructive dismissal, the employee has to prove a breach of contract by the employer and or a conduct that was so unreasonable that the employee had no choice but to leave and the employee must behave reasonably as well. But the employee in behaving reasonably would be expected to avail of the internal procedures first, the internal grievance procedures. In Murray versus Rockaville Shellfish Limited referred to by the adjudicator, it's been well established that a question of constructive dismissal must be considered under two headings, entitlement and reasonableness. An employee must act reasonably in terminating his contract of employment. 
resignation must not be the first option taken by the employee and all other reasonable options including following the grievance procedure must be explored and the employee must pursue his grievance through the procedure laid down before taking the drastic step of resigning. This is what Mr Griffin did and this is why Mr Griffin lost his case. In Beatty vs Bayside Supermarkets the tribunal considers that it's reasonable to expect that procedures laid down in such agreements be substantially followed in appropriate cases by employer and employee as the case may be. And this view was expressed and followed by the Employment Appeals Tribunal in Conway v Ulster Bank Limited. Again, there's a long line of decisions from the WRC, from the Labour Court, from the Employment Appeals Tribunal and the need for the employee to show that they've acted reasonably in the circumstances in tending, tendering their resignation. For example, by using the employer's grievance procedure. There's also cases referred to Ranchin versus Alliance Worldwide, other cases where the employee must demonstrate that they've pursued their grievance through the procedures laid down in the contract of employment. So essentially also there's two tests for constructive dismissal contract test and the reasonableness test and it's uh, an either or uh, an and or test in other words if the WRC is not satisfied that the contract test has been proven in other words if the employee is unable to show that the employer has breached the contract of employment then it's obliged to consider the reasonableness reasonableness of a test that is the employer conducts himself or his affairs so unreasonably that the employee cannot fairly be expected to put up with it any longer then the employee is justified in leaving the WRC held that the claim uh, must fail as Mr Griffin failed to communicate his grievance before resigning and he refused to go through a formal process to reach a resolution of the problem I agree with the respondent, the uh, WRC adjudicator said that it was the complainant's unwillingness to go through a formal process that ended his employment with the respondent and it is for this reason that I must now find that the complaint as presented is not well founded and therefore fails. The case is Brian Griffin versus Sage. It's uh, there's a blog post on my website employmentrightsireland.com uh, and there's a link in that blog post to the actual decision itself. It's well worth a read, but if you take one thing and one thing only from it, it is that if you're considering resigning your position and if you're thinking of bringing a claim for constructive dismissal, you really do need to have exhausted the internal grievance procedures or whatever is the appropriate procedure in the workplace first. Hope you find this video useful. If you do, I'd appreciate if you gave it the thumbs up down below. Thanks a lot.